Cross Plate Injuries Review The physis is the growth plate. It lies between the metaphysis and the epiphysis. The epiphysis is a secondary ossification center located between the growth plate and the articular cartilage. The metaphysis is the bone on the other side of the physis. It is away from the joint. Growth plates are layers. The reserve zone, minimally active, allow for matrix production. The chondrocytes are few and lies parallel to the surface. The proliferative zone, cellular perforation and longitudinal growth occurs from this zone. This zone determines if the person will be tall or short. Then the hypertrophic zone, maturation, degeneration, and provisional calcification, the chondrocytes accumulate and release calcium. This is the weakest zone. The majority of growth plate injuries occur in the hypertrophic zone. We need to be familiar with Salter Harris classification of growth plate injuries. There are five types. Type 1, fracture through the growth plate. There may not be an obvious displacement. Type 2, fracture through the growth plate and the metaphysis. That will spare the epiphysis. Type 1 and type 2 usually have a good result. Type 3, fracture through the growth plate and the epiphysis is sparing the metaphysis. Type 4, fracture through the three elements of the bone, the growth plate, the metaphysis, and the epiphysis. Type 3 and 4 usually involves the joint. Usually type 3 and 4 requires surgery, and the outcome is worse than with type 1 and 2. Type 5 has the worst prognosis, it is a compression fracture of the growth plate. It is usually very difficult to diagnose. The diagnosis is usually late. Growth plate fractures have different characteristics according to the site of injury. Now we move on to clavicle fractures. Proximal physial fracture injury. The secondary center of ossification at the proximal end of the clavicle appears at the age of 17 to 18 and fuses with the shaft at the age of 22 to 25. Fractures of the medial clavicle occurs in children with an open physis. To suspect an injury to the medial clavicle growth plate in patients with a medial clavicle injury who are less than 25 years of age, it is usually a growth plate injury and not a sternoclavicular injury. Most of these injuries are classified as Salter 1 or Salter 2, and the CT scan may be helpful for the diagnosis. Treatment Observation are less symptomatic, you will reduce the fracture, you may need a thoracic surgeon back up for the posterior injury. Now the distal clavicle physial injury is a rare injury, it's an equivalent to AC separation. It looks like an AC separation, but really isn't. So when the fracture occurs in the distal third, the distal clavicle is usually stripped away from the physis and the preosseal sleeve, and it is called a sleeve fracture. The injury is usually treated by a sling. Then we move on to the proximal humerus. 80% of the longitudinal growth of the humerus occurs in the proximal physis. The injuries are usually type 1 or type 2. In a young child, the proximal humerus fracture allows for significant remodeling
following injury of the proximal physis, even if the fracture is significantly displaced. Therefore, in young children with fracture proximal humerus, we treat them conservatively with this length. The lady leaguer's shoulder is a widened growth plate of the proximal humerus. It is considered a stress fracture from an overuse. The treatment will be cessation of throwing and a period of rest. Then we move on to the distal humerus. Transepiphyseal separation of the distal humerus. There are two types, the one that occurs in the newborn and the other one that occurs in an older child. In this type of injury, consider child abuse. Usually, the physial separation of the distal humerus occurs in a younger child. The diagnosis is usually difficult. It may be missed. This separation should be highly suspected with elbow injuries before the age of one year old and it should be differentiated from an elbow dislocation. The distal fragment usually moves posteriorly and medially. It looks like it is a posterior medial displacement of the distal fragment of the forearm. However, the radiocapitular relationship remains the same. If the fracture is displaced, treat the fracture by a close reduction and pinning. Child abuse should be suspected and considered if the patient has multiple fractures at different stages of healing, corner fractures, posterior fractures, or fracture of the femur before the walking age. Lateral condylar fracture is considered a type 4 Salter Harris fracture. This is an important fracture. Internal rotation oblique view will show you the fracture displacement. The fracture could be missed or unappreciated. There are two classification systems used for this fracture the Milch classification and the Jacob classification. Type 1 fracture. The fracture line is lateral to the trochlear groove. Type 2, the fraction line goes into the trochlear groove. Jacob types are three types. The first type, the articular surface is intact. The second type, the fracture goes into the joint, but no fracture fragment rotation. The third type, the fracture fragment is rotated and displaced. Treatment. Non-displaced fracture, you need to put long arm cast for 46 weeks and close follow-up in the first two weeks. If it is displaced, RIF, and we rarely do arthrogram and rarely do close reduction percutaneous pinning. However, in some cases, you may need to do that. Complications, non-union, will give you cubitus valgus and tardy under nerve palsy can be physial growth arrest can also will be AVN from interruption of the posterior blood supply especially if you do surgery then we go to the elbow olecranon oh, fracture can be confused with a growth plate and vice versa the olecranon ossification center appears at 9 and fuses at the age of 16. The patient may not be able to extend the elbow. There may be association with osteogenesis imperfecta. And as I said before, the fracture and the secondary ossification center can be confused with each other. You got to know when the ossification centers appear around the elbow and what is the order of this appearance. We use the mnemonic, cry toe, C-R-I-T-O-E. The ossification centers appear at 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and you will notice there is two years in between each other.
fracture of the radial head and neck are not common in children. The proximal radius give about 25% of growth of the entire radius. The fracture can be non-displaced, displaced, tilted, or translocated. These types of fractures are rare and usually occur around 9 years of age and usually due to a valgus force. The fracture may involve the physis. The fracture usually is soldered too, but it may involve the radial neck at the metaphysis. An AP and lateral view of the elbow that include the forearm should be taken. The radial head and the capitulum should be aligned in all views. Try to remember how you can get the radial head capitular view. It may be helpful. The beam is directed 45 degree proximally. Treatment usually immobilization if the fracture is not displaced. That immobilization is used if the angulation is less than 30 degrees. Up to 30 degrees of angulation is acceptable. Close reduction is used if angulation is greater than 30 degrees. Open reduction is done if more than 45 degree residual angulation persists after failure of reduction, closed or by a K-wire percutaneous method. How about the distal radius? The fracture occurs with a low risk of growth arrest. The most common Salter Harris fracture occurs in the distal radius, usually type 1 or type 2. It may require oblique views in order to see the metaphysial fracture. If the fracture occurs in the distal ulna, there is a chance of 50% rate of growth arrest. This growth arrest will lead to a shortened ulna. Now we go to the lower extremity, the proximal femur. Ossification center of the femoral head appears at about six months. In case of transvisial separation of the femoral head with dislocation, the rate of vascular necrosis is almost 100%. Distal femur growth plate injuries. There is a high incidence of physial arrest that leads to growth arrest and deformity. The more displacement, the more likely that the patient will have growth arrest. Fracture of the distal femur growth plate is unpredictable in its behavior. If the fracture is displaced, the growth arrest is usually about 65%. The prognosis may not correlate with Salter types. Some cases may need an ankle brachial index evaluation. Now we move to the proximal tibia. Proximal tibia physial injury is a dangerous injury. It usually results from a high energy trauma and there is a traumatic separation of the growth plate at the knee. The physis is at the level of the trifurcation of vessels a fracture displacement may injure the vessels. We will reduce and fix that fracture. Tibial tubercle fracture. There are several types, but type 3 will go into the proximal tibial uh, growth plate. Tibial tubercle injury may be involved in compartment syndrome due to injury of the anterior tibial recurrent artery. When this fracture is displaced, it usually involves the joint and it probably need to be reduced and fixed surgically. A sleeve fracture of the patella, the sleeve fracture occurs between the cartilage sleeve and the main part of the patella. It can easily be missed because of a small amount of bone and large amount of cartilage.
The sleeve fracture of the patella will require surgery with a tension band or a modified tension band technique. Just remember, a sleeve fracture of the clavicle does not need surgery. Distal tibial and ankle physial injury. The distal tibia growth plate contributes about 40% of the tibial growth or about 5 mm per year. There are some injuries around the ankle joint. One of them is that a low fracture, which is the lateral portion of the growth plate is open, and when an avulsion fracture of the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament occurs, the condition is called the low fracture. There is a low risk of growth arrest. If there is a displacement of more than two millimeter, you will do surgery. Get a CT scan if you are not sure of the amount of displacement before you decide if you're going to do surgery or not. Another one is the triplane fracture, which is Salter 3 in an AP view and Salter 2 in the lateral view. It is usually a Salter 4 fracture involving the growth plate, the metaphysis, and the epiphysis. CT scan is usually very helpful. The treatment is usually ORIF if it is displaced. Another entity called distal tibial physial injury. It may give rotational deformity. X-ray will show mild physial widening that will lead to change in the foot progression angle with an increased external rotation of the foot. Ankle fracture in general will show growth, arrest, which will occur with fractures around the medial malleolus, which is Salter 4 fracture. And if the medial distal tibia growth arrest occur, that will result in varus. And if the distal fibular growth arrest occur, that will result in valgus. Growth plate fracture usually occur in the zone of hypertrophy zone of hypertrophy. It is a weak zone. It may be difficult to see the fracture and assess the amount of displacement. If you are concerned, get a different x-ray views. Compare with the other side or dig deeper and get CT scan or an MRI. Treatment. Avoid repeated forcible manipulation Three attempts will close the physis in about 50% of the cases. No manipulation after seven days. Usually you reduce the growth plate injury by traction and very little translation. You need to know the difference between physis, epiphysis, and apophysis. Here is the physis. Here is the epiphysis. The epiphysis is usually near the joint, and here the apophysis, usually attached to a tendon or to a ligament. The physis is the growth plate. Physial fracture heal in roughly half the time required by an equivalent sized bone.